Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem comes to us from Philip Levine from his new Selected Poems, published in 1992 by Alfred A. Knopf. Um, this was obviously selected, so um, comprises or compiles together a number of different poems from a number of different collections. The poem I'm going to read is from, um, let's see, brings together work from A Walk with Tom Jefferson, published in 1988. Um, and the poem I'm going to read is entitled Buying and Selling. Buying and Selling. All the way across the Bay Bridge I sang to the cool winds buffeting my Ford, for I was on my way to a life of buying untouched drive shafts, a universal joints, perfect bearing so steeped in cosmoline they could endure a century and still retain their purity of functional design. They could outlast everything until, like us, their usefulness became legend and they were transformed into sculpture. At Benicia, or the Oakland Naval Yard, or Alameda, I left the brilliant western sun behind to enter the wilderness of warehouses with one sullen enlisted man as guide. There, under the blinking artificial light, I was allowed to unwrap a single sample, to hack or saw my way with delicacy through layer after layer of cardboard, metallic paper, cloth webbing, wax as hard as wood, until the dulled steel was revealed beneath. I read, if I could, the maker's name, letters, numbers, all of which translated into functions and values known only to the old moguls of the great international junk companies of Chicago, Philadelphia, Brooklyn, whose young emissary I was. I, who at twenty had wet publicly in the Dexter Davison branch of the public library over the death of Keats in the Colvin biography and had prayed like him to be among the immortals, now lived at thirty by a code of figures so arcane they pass from one side of the brain to the other only in darkness. I, who at 26 had abandoned several careers in salesmanship, copper kitchenware, fuller brushes, American encyclopedias from door to unanswered door in the down and out neighborhoods of Detroit, turning in my sample cases like a general, handing over his sidearms and swagger stick. I, now relayed the new gospels across mountains and the great plain states to my waiting masters. The news came back, bid, and we did and did in secret. The bids were awarded, so trucks were dispatched, Mohawks, Tama Shanters, Iroquois, and the new Wellingtons. I stood on one side while the forklifts did their work entering only at the final moment to pay both loaders and drivers their pittances not to steal, to buy at last what could not be bought. The day was closing down. Even in California, the afternoon skies must turn from blue to a darker blue and finally take the color of coal. And stars, the same or similar ones, hidden so long above the Chicago River or the IRT to Brooklyn, emerge stubbornly, not in ones, but in pairs, where there is safety in numbers. Silent, alone, I would stand in the truck's gray wake feeling something had passed, was over, complete. The great metal doors at the loading dock crashed down, and in the sudden aftermath I inhaled a sadness stronger than my lucky strike, stronger than the sadness of these hills and valleys with their secret ponds and streams unknown even to children, or the sadness of children themselves, who having been abandoned believe their parents will return before dark. Um, and that was Buying and Selling by Philip Levine, uh, collected in his new selected poems from 1992, published by Alfred A. Knopf. Um, a truly wonderful omnibus collection of fantastic poetry. 
Um, those of you who know me know I have a deep fondness for Levine's work and uh, consider him a great influence on my own uh, writing. I, uh, I came across this exact book in about 1995 or 6. I was in a used bookstore wandering, looking for inspiration. I had come back from two years in Taiwan and was lost as to what to do about writing. I was still then and continued on for a number of years, invested in completing my, my undergraduate degree in computer science. But I had always been writing and I had always been thinking about writing and I had written poetry. And when I had returned back to the States, I really did not know how and where to go or what I could look for, where I could look for inspiration. I was not formally being trained uh, or pursuing a course at that time that would have led me into poetry. Um, it was more happenstance. Good fortune of having readers as parents, my father a librarian, but more than that, just the, the serendipity of finding this exact book on a bookshelf in a used bookstore in Provo, Utah, and pulling it down and reading poems like this one that moved me and told me that there was so much more that could be possible with poetry, um, that the voice could be plain spoken and yet masterful, could capture the world that we live in and also transform it into something wonderful, something moving, something real and yet also more than real. Um, I'm grateful for the power of poetry to do that. And I hope in some small way that this series of videos that I'm doing is a way for you to discover um, who as a poet and whose words are connecting with you um, and perhaps inspire you to go out and have your own experience in a bookstore somewhere or online somewhere and discover that there is someone who speaks your language, knows your heart, and offers you a vision and a path forward for your own writing, your own creativity. So um, that's it for, for us today. Um, I'm Neil Aiken. This is the Hermit Poetry Series. And I wish you all the very best. If you like what's happening on this channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. And you'll be notified every time there's a new video. And if you like this video and this poem, please do check out the description for more information about Levine, about where to purchase this book, where to find other work. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's uh, basically it. So until next time, do your best to stay involved with the world and create things. Um, hopefully you're staying safe and well and finding ways to be active. Um, weather hopefully is kind to you and uh, provides you an opportunity to get out of the house, something I should probably do more of myself, and, uh, and find something to connect yourself to a broader world, a larger world. Um, one, one poem, one book, uh, one conversation at a time. So until next time, stay safe and well. We'll be back again with more poetry, more reading, and until then, uh, be good, and I'll try to do my best to be good as well, and we'll see you soon.